special guest. Um, as you know, the closing ceremony is organized with a number of activities, but the most prominent activity is having a, a speaker, and uh, it is with great pleasure that I want to announce our speaker, um, Professor Giorgio Janikian Mubar, for friends uh, like us. And um, the um, title is Threatened Heritage. What happened and is happening to the world heritage in the last half century through men's and nature's war? And uh, I don't think I need to say how relevant this is uh, these days. So I think I will let uh, Professor Janik Yan go through this. But let me say a few words about Professor Janik Yan. Uh, he's uh, an architect and he has been chair uh, of architecture restoration at UAP, the uh, architecture institute here in Venice, uh, vice director of a Shanghai Zhao Tong University International Research Center for Architectural Heritage Conservation. And uh, given the international breadth of the AU, uh, this is particularly relevant to us. Visiting professor at the School of Architecture at the University of Tokyo in Jerusalem and East London, where he was responsible for the MSc in Architecture and Conservation. Uh, he has conducted research in Armenia, Japan and Nepal, World Heritage City Nomination Consultant in Nepal, uh, Armenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Moldova for UNESCO, expert consul consultant for the restoration of ECM. Saudi, uh, I don't think I can pronounce this properly, Giorgio uh, will tell us, Edine uh, in Turkey, and for the European Commission. Uh, professional work in Venice, which includes the restoration of St. Mark's clock tower, the restoration and reconditioning of the water cistern of the Fonda Kodekedeski. And uh, let me add that one of our first summer schools here uh, called Visualizing Venice, I had to do exactly with the system and system and uh, Professor Gianni Gian was one of the leading uh, professors in this uh, summer school. Over 90 publications of history and restoration in Italian, English, French, Japanese and Chinese and previously taught at VIU in spring 2003 fall 2011, 2012, 13, 14 former member of the VIU Academic Council, which is the body of the VIU which works through the, uh, through the proposal and the, and the um, teaching activities, and he has been recently nominated our VIU Fellow. In fact, he's our first VIU Fellow, so I'm particularly pleased to have, <laughs> to have Professor Janik Yan with us. A warm welcome to, to Nubar. Even if in our conscience and thought, 
the concept of monuments is quite clear, it is maybe worth trying to advance a brief definition. Among the several possible and the several used in the various laws and charters, let me give you a simple and significant one. A monument is an object that is made for memory. Our historic memory is preserved for us in documents and treatises, but not only. Whatever our ancestors built and painted and sculptured or composed, tell us and written, sorry, tell us what their culture was, what their needs and desires were, what their life and what their beliefs. So, a monument is what reminds us of the past. Again, memory of the past. That's me. And welcome to Armenia. A monument, heritage, needs care. And the first care is a good design. This is 6th century our times, with a very bad design. It was an immense church, built in three different layers of circles all around. And after 50 years of its completion, because of an earthquake, Armenia is a very earthquake place, it fell down, and it's like that. So, the nature of earthquake is one of the components of our threats. Extremely important. Or well, now we are moving to L'Aquila, recent time, just a few years ago, 2009. And uh, the picture you are seeing here are the effect on historical buildings of an earthquake. So the monuments and the simple houses, but who says that the simple houses are not monuments? I don't. They fell down. They, they go into pieces. Even the modern ones, look at the beautiful contemporary window, contemporary, it has maybe 80 years of age, also that one is affected. And we have a dream, black villa. Those are the pictures of the people who died, a few of them, Three, more than 300 people died. And this is the main square of black villa, where it's written, let's rebuild it, because it's a dead city. So this is the effect of the nature on, on monuments on historic cities. There is another problem, threat that we have, is the change of power. When from the Greek power we went into the Roman power, what they did, the first act, was to change the Acropolis. The Acropolis had no acts. It was casually built in a way. And when the Romans arrived, they decided to create an axe. And they did it. Or, for instance, this was a Greek temple in Syracuse, which was transformed in the 7th century into a Christian church. So the reuse of it, this is a way of preserving the stones, the buildings, the memory, changing the use. Or, for instance, the Hadrian's Mausoleum in Rome, which was transformed into a castle for the, by the popes still existing and still keeping its Roman evidence. Or in Cordova, La Grande Moschea, the great mosque in Cordova, which was a physical church of the 6th century, which was transformed by the Arabs in this fantastic mosque. Fantastic at the point that when the, the, the Christians, the Spanish people, reconquered uh, Cordova, they transform it into a church and destroying, creating again an axe and destroying a lot of columns in the center of it. At the point that the emperor Charles V said, what a disaster you did. You didn't respect this fantastic work of art and architecture. You know, Charles V. Or again the use from a Teatro Marcello in Rome, which has been into housing inside, keeping much of the structure because it was good enough to support it. 
and adding, adding uh, houses, other flows on top of it. So layers, the concept of layers to me is very relevant. Michelangelo, what was his attitude of Michelangelo, that is St. Peter, towards monuments of the past? And uh, as last commission he received by Domiziano, the task of, sorry, he didn't receive by him because he died more than 1,000 years before. But he built Domiziano, he built the, the spa in, in Rome, just close to the train station. And uh, the, the commission that um, Michelangelo received by the Pope, not by the Pope, by an important Sicilian priest was to do something to transform the ruins of this former spa bath into this, the red is the address, into church. And this is it. It doesn't look like a church, it looks like a Roman bath which is collapsed, which is broken up into pieces. And this is extremely strange because Michelangelo was the best architect in Rome. And how comes that he didn't he didn't transform it, knock down and rebuild it completely. He didn't. He had a very strange attitude. He started loving the ruins, the Roman ruins. And he built the church, leaving those elements of it, the, the former spa, into evidence. Altering it a little bit, but not much, just the interior. And this is his idea. This comes not from my, from me, from Professor Bruno Ferri. He says the concept of incompleto, the uncompleted sculpture of the late age of Michelangelo, and the same for the church, changed in the 18th century with altering the evidence of this brutal attitude towards an important monument and creating it with a very heavy decoration, which changed the interior. Now, now we're changing from Rome and from the Renaissance, we're flying to Dresden. And this is another of the threats, the major threats that the monuments and our monumental cities have. This is the war, the action of man. And this building here, this is an image of Dresden after the bombing was the end of the world. And this is the finger, which has been rebuilt as a present by the Soviet Union to the sister republic, democratic republic of socialist Germany, and as a gallery, art gallery. And so this is, how would we call it? A fake, a copy, a replica, it's something that didn't exist. We don't have the time to discuss a lot about this. Fake, copy, and authenticity. The students of my course, they have some ideas on the authenticity. Authenticity is the real stuff. The masonry, the beams, the floors, the windows. Even. That's the, the original, but with some alteration. In this case, it was completely knocked down, and it has been rebuilt a new Baroque building, which is fantastic to visit because you will see the, the, the George Jones uh, lady, the naked lady, and uh, other beautiful paintings, but still the architecture is good. Very good that another set of men, look how black, the black crust on top of the sculptures is affecting the stone. This is the pollution, another thread. That so that the building is getting older, but it has less than 50 years. This is dramatic. The SS troops, special squad, decided that because in, in Warsaw there was a very strong resistance against the Germans occupying, occupying Poland, they decided to destroy completely the, the town center. And so, it has been, although it has been nominated in 1918 
in the nomination that is written very clearly that this was going to be the only possible acceptable reconstruction in the World Heritage List. No reconstructions, no fakes. We need authenticity, we need integrity. So in this case it has been accepted because the pressure of the people was very strong. A few images showing before and after. And this is quite dramatic, isn't it? And it's like that. You know, there is a social history here. Uh, Stalin said, I don't accept the air reconstruction. We will design and build a beautiful Soviet city, modern, with big alleys, and as we, we did everywhere in, in Soviet Union. But the people said, please, Congress, Stalin, we don't like it. We would prefer to do it. And he said, it will cost a lot of money. And the answer was, no, it will not cost a lot of money, because we will do it with our hands. We will work on Saturday and Sunday on rebuilding it. So it has a social value. The, social, the people were moved, they wanted to go back to the past, which is impossible from a philosophical and practical point of view. But they rebuilt it. And now, this is the main square, the market square of, of Warsaw, which starts again for pollution and dirt, starts getting older and less fake, a little bit more true. And uh, nomination in 2005, we are in Mosta, Bosnia-Herzegovina. The, the old bridge has been knocked down. <coughs> Other examples of heritage there, of the Austrian period. The bridge has been knocked down by the Croat army in 2003, I would say. And it has been rebuilt. Not utilizing the same stones, though. The big stone block, this has been built in the 16th century. Under probably the, the work of the big uh, Turkish architect, whom I keep forgetting. But anyhow, the big stones, the original stones, are not those. They are there. They have been taken out from the river, the Neretva river, by the Hungarian scuba divers army, and they placed them there as a landscaping element. But the bridge is brand new. And also the houses around the bridge, the old houses, you can see them, in some of them into ruins. All the roofs were destroyed during the Civil War. All the floors in, in wood were destroyed. And the only uh, remaining part structure was the, 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 the masonry. So this is a complete reconstruction of it. And uh, again, disputable. But, you know, a nomination should consider also political reasons. And so the bridge and this area has been accepted as World Heritage in recent years. So slowly, again, most of slowly, slowly, we are back to the concept of rebuilding, which is prohibited. If you look at the UNESCO guidelines, the operational guidelines, which were written for the nomination dossier to promote a site world heritage, or to not promote, to not accept it, is very clearly written that every construction is not admitted. It's admitted only in one case for the Greek temple, Roman temples, who fell down because of an earthquake, and then you have the real stone there. You can take them back in their original position, without changing much. Not many new pieces of stone. This is called, um, this is called anastylosis, and this is acceptable. But the pieces are there on the floor, you can put them back. In this case, you have to renew it completely. So the concept of authenticity and integrity doesn't fit with it. But although that, it's like a little bit, maybe it's a picture, little bit farther. Or in Armenia, which was a former republic of the United <coughs> Soviet Union, beautiful country, and uh, with beautiful monuments, actually. And here you can see how they protected the monument. This is a world heritage site. Gerald Monastery, dug into the rock. One part of it, here you have the big church. The biggest church is inside the rock. So 
So it's hewn into the rock. And um, they, what they did when they could, for instance, you can see that the roofs are in rusty iron. No money, the most, the easiest element that we have, we are poor, is the steel, and they used it. Very, very efficient, it, it worked very well. Another way that they have, because you know, being in Soviet Union, it was very difficult from a cultural point of view, dealing with conservation. Because they didn't participate much, the, the colleagues, architects, dealing in restoration. In the international committees, the debate in Soviet Union was not strong enough as the one we had all over the world, in the West, and in China, and in Japan. They were closed in a way. So they did what they could. They had a beautiful ruin. This is called the, the Greek temple in uh, Garni. And uh, this is a picture of the 60s. You can see the two ladies wearing their dresses, very short. And we were so lucky that with my wife, we were there in 1973, and we sold the building. Those are my slides. This one and the other one. Somebody can recognize you, my wife, <laughs> on the right hand side. That's you. Yeah, and what they did, simply they were built. You know, and quite interesting. It's not acceptable. It's not anastylosis. They went to pick up pieces of stone everywhere, of the brick stones, in the villages, destroying old houses, maybe vernacular and beautiful houses, but they got them, and they were built it. The columns are brand new, and the frontone, and maybe it has many pieces which are original, but still, this is a way they did reconstruction. And this attitude, this trend went on for other years. Even in the democratic, so-called democratic Armenian Republic in the New Day. And those are pictures where you can see that an important, very important church here in Noralan, the new convent, is without the drum and without the dome. Again, the iron sheet protecting it. But they decided to promote it more than the site. So they studied it, they did very important surveys, and they find out the existing old elements in dark color and the missing ones. And they rebuilt the church. Look at the drum. And look at the door. This is almost a complete and this has not been accepted by the World Heritage Center. So the promotion was not granted because of this was considered a non-authentic, authentic monument. Other kinds of restoration I was involved in, they were in Bosnia and Herzegovina after the war. In 2006, I was there. And we were discussing the destiny of the future with the European Commission for in Culture, which was involved in a project of the conservation of 180 monuments in the Balkanic area. One was this. Is the, in Foccia, this is the Alaja Mosque. And this has been destroyed during the civil war, that's the same. And this is the only element which survived, one part of it, which has been destroyed by the National Commission of Bosnia and Herzegovina to rebuild completely the mosque. Not, they didn't respect even the surviving part of, of the mosque. No, they knocked it down to the foundations in order to rebuild it. And, you know, I was a member of this commission, and I said, I'm very sorry, I don't accept it. We, international experts, are not supposed to accept something which is a big mistake. It's the falsification of history. And they said, no, 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 we voted, and uh, you resigned. And uh, they, they, they built other examples. They, I took a picture there, very bad picture, but it's there. And that's it, after the reconstruction. 
So this trend of reconstruction was Dresden to Mostar, to Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mostar in Bosnia and Herzegovina, apparently is very successful. And it goes on, as you could see now in my presentation. Now, the Frau in Kirche, another example. This is that world heritage. It's an important church which has been knocked down by the Muslim Allied forces. And in 2005, this was what was remain of the church. But there was the, the population, they wanted to rebuild it, and so they started rebuilding it. And uh, so now, look at this. This is during the reconstruction, this is the most beautiful thing there. Could, could there be the, the design of the church? Modern. Renzo Piano, or another good architect, could have done that. This is our new frontier, built in 2005. No, those are just the scaffoldings and the same. So, is this authentic? Is this integral? I won't. I don't think it is. I think it's a very big mistake. What is authentic is those parts which is in the black one which has not knocked down. But all the rest is brand new. And this is the inside. They're very happy with As the Phoenician theater after the arson of 1996, you go to the Phoenician, you look at all the paintings, all the frescoes. They are all brand new. And we lost the attitude to paint those beautiful replicas. We, we cannot do that. We have to do something else. Or another example, again in Germany, we were fighting against it, is the reconstruction of the Berliner castle. The Berliner Schloss, which is on. This is the castle, which has 1,000 years of history, layers and layers. This is the final one before the war. That's it. And that's it again. And this is after the bombing. It's not completely done this. Almost integral, the roofs are gone, the dome has gone, but the masonry is very strong, very powerful, very well built. And the Communist Party decided in the, in the, in the city to destroy it completely. Because, look at the dynamite, because they said this is a, the power of the uh, uh, kings of Germany, who promoted so many wars and, and so many disasters, we want to delete this, the concept of deletion to delete our past. And what came out? You know those two guys, especially you. <laughs> those are Marx and Lengers. They are not facing, but they are assisting to the reconstruction of this building. So the castle was transformed into the House of the Republic, which was very much loved by the people in East Berlin, because apparently they can gather without microphones, microspies, they can talk freely, and they had many cultural and artistic events. They were very pleased with it. But then it happened that the German, uh, Democratic Republic of Germany fell down reunification, and the decision of the new democratic government was to destroy it again. Second destruction. And look at the people, students, you know, as you are, writing, und wann kommt der König, when the king will come back? <laughs> Question mark. You destroy the palace of the republic, and you re rebuild. There's a destruction of it, no more, it's gone. This is the funeral, and that's the project. Which is, it's, they're building it. And uh, that's it. Is this authentic? Is, is this what we want? I don't think so. And the architect, a colleague of my university, who won this uh, competition, decided that one of the four facades will be built in Mosul style, in a way. It's a bit fascist, though. Anyway, <laughs> this is it. So, what does it mean? That in Berlin, the signs of war, of our past, were deleted, were cancelled, one by one. And we were so lucky, to remember, to find a few evidence of the wants of the columns in this door, 
maybe Brand Brandenburg or Tokyo. This is, you see, new stone because of the shelling. Or here, you can see the bullets, <coughs> the reconstruction after the fire, or here is a better burnt down stone transformed into, into, into gifts. So this is, I was so much moved that I took a very bad picture. But that's it. That's the only evidence of the war. And the war is very important. It has been a catastrophe and it's very good for our memory. So we need those kind of sounds. But at the end, we'll get back to Munich, where they had a different attitude. Bagan, another experience I had last year as a UNESCO consultant. And uh, that's it. You, you haven't been yet to, to Bagan in Myanmar. That's the place. It's fantastic. But it wasn't like that. The country was ruled by generals. And when they wanted to promote 20 years ago the nomination of Bagan, they destroyed all the houses, poor people's houses, built in wood, among or between the temples. They gave them 24 hours time, they said, loudspeakers. We will come tomorrow morning with, with trucks. You have to dismantle your house and we will give you one kilo of nails. So everything was destroyed by, by the owners of the of the poor houses and replaced in another side in order to empty the area to create a new landscape, ancient, antique, so that the monuments are coming. But how were the monuments restored? This is not me. This is a picture of the most important French archaeologist who worked for 50 years in Yamaha in Bagan. He gave it. This is an image on your left hand side, 1986 of the temple. Do you see a temple? I don't see a temple. And on the right hand side, you see the temple today. So this is the way of reconstructing it. And uh, shall we accept this kind of attitude of falsification of our past? I don't think we should. This is nice. We don't have much time to read it. But the guy on top left is the, the stone mason. He says, oh, here is my column, very simple, plain, and uh, I like it, 700 years ago, a few hundred years ago. On the right, you have the architect, in Berlin, and he says, oh, that's the column, the rest of the column. And he says, great, great ruin, isn't it? Not enough? To restore from the other guy, the black one. He said, Bless you, I have restored the whole cathedral from a chip of paper. And down, that's his reconstruction. And he says, There now, that's about the thing the original designer evidently intended. Something florid and complicated. We are in the times of John Ruskin late 19th century England, and he was fighting against this kind of attitude. So, Venice and this lagoon, maybe we have, for political reasons, to go very fast in it. Nomination in 1987, we have many problems, but what I'm showing you very quickly is those little, a reconstruction, you know, of the origins of Venice in this lagoon, little islands, that's the city of Venice, and what matters to me, to tell you, is this process. Is the layering of land over land, land over water, land over land, and then creating something. Eight different layers of buildings. Here we, we were dating it. And so we have Venice, Pisan City, is a layer, layer, multi layer many, many centuries. And what is the attitude? How can we restore the city of Venice? And how does it work? For instance, the master plan. This is the palace, 1550s, 1560s, three bays. And so according to the identification of the typology, the building type, A is the singular, B is the double, C is the three bay building, and so forth, detecting something like 50 of them you will design the 
master plan and the rules for the restoration. For instance, this is B1, is two double, two bay buildings with something in the middle, staircase, and this is singular, this is serial, and so forth. The task of the master plan is, is to go back to the original methodology. This is Castel Forte San Rocco, 1548-1550, is done the palace, it's a tenement of four houses, very wealthy, <coughs> wealthy people from the colors and the numbers, you can see the four houses. The four houses, according to the master plan, they have to be restored as far as possible in the original situation as they were. So maybe in four, going back to the four. But if you go, this is the reality. Today, Castel Forte San Rocco has been divided into 18 flats. How can you get, go back to the past? It's impossible. So what I'm showing you is a, a very wrong sense of history, which leads us Forgetting that also the future has a value. In some cases, you have fantastic layers. Here, for instance, Gadamus. The first layer on the water is 12th century. The second floor is one century later, maybe, second layer. The third layer is full Renaissance, with the Serviana window here. <coughs> and the fourth layer is maybe an 18th century. So what will mean to go back to the original situation? To delete the other floor, going back to the Romantic one, which is absolutely crazy. This is a big mistake of the master plan. In the meanwhile, the most important palaces of Venice, they undergo a very bad restoration. This is the Fondano dei Tedeschi. It was a hotel and a, a storehouse for the German Merchants from the north and from the south. They were gathering there, living there, and working there. So this is the internal when it has been transformed into the main post office of Venice. Beautiful space. And then uh, the Nestor bought it from the state, and the big architect, uh, Archistar Red Kulas, designed it. You know, this window here doesn't exist. It's six meters of diameter, knocking down. I don't know how many cubic meters of early Renaissance masonry to show what? To show another staircase we started up, very new escalators. So this ruining completely the internal space of the city. So very strict in uh, planning and very weak in architectural conservation. That's it. Now the project has been little bit changed. But anyhow, it has been approved, and at the very end, they are back dancing on top of the terrace. When it was forbidden to build terraces on the roof of the city of Venice. So powerful people, they can do big projects. So, and then, we are towards the end of our, I hope, is not too long. Okay? Now, terror against, against. <coughs> here we are in Bamiya. Syria. This is absolutely new things. It happened a few few months ago. The Armenian Church of the Forty Martyrs of Sebaste, in the internal, external, and that's the church today. So that's that's war. It continues the demolition. Or in Palmyra, uh, those pictures are in 79 AD, you remember. And the nomination came in 1980. That's citadel of the city actually from up above you see a Roman city of the second and third century our times absolutely beautiful with a colonnade and uh, everything fantastic here those Roman tombs have been demolished three of them have been demolished recently by the terror by the ISIS government they call them the terrorists this is a theater utilized by the terrorists to, to shoot people enemies
from satellite, you see before and after. But it doesn't happen all the time, because to knock down stone monuments is hard, it's a lot of work. Why they did this? To tell to the world that they are the owners of the place, and they do what they want. They said the Baal Temple is not Islam, so it must be destroyed, as all the other temples of this. And uh, I have a feeling that this doctor, Khaled al-Assad, will be killed. He was the director of the administrative university. He, because I have the feeling that he didn't want to tell to those criminals who were the treasure of that. And so he paid. Another site, Sabrata, they just arrived. Sabrata is a Roman city uh, in the second and third century on the Mediterranean Sea, built by the Romans. And uh, those are the ruins, my pictures, the theater, just occupied by Isis. Two days ago, there is a flag of Isis on the theater here. This is a museum. Instead of the blue helmets of the, of the United Nations to go and preserve the monuments, this was an idea of the president of the, of the United Nations culture, Irina Moskova. Uh, listen, you may remember Srebrenica, where the UN army didn't protect the people on the siege and 8,000 people no protection. So why they will lose their life for all the Roman stones? Forget it. What they do is to go there very quickly to get all the treasures and to bring them in a safe place, waiting for the end of the hostility. This could be something that would be feasible. And uh, back to another way of I'm, really, I'm finishing. This is the invented heritage. I was at a conference and I went to, to see Skopje, who was hit by an earthquake, very strong earthquake, and uh, they hit many, many buildings. But those were, those are not replicas. Those are invented monuments, invented new monuments. They don't have anything of Baroque, or Neo-Baroque, or Neo-Renaissance, so they want classify those buildings, uh, which are uh, institutional buildings, foreign mystery, the, the museum, the theater. All those are not reconstruction, they are even worse. They are false old buildings. Now, uh, my presentation has been very pessimistic. I'm very sorry. But there are good things in the world. Taj Mahal. Nominated in, in the year 1983, that's beautiful. Uh, it's a tomb for the wife of the king. And uh, this kind of monuments, in those sites, they undergo perennial, you call it restoration, you call it renewal, you call it maintenance. Father, grandfather, and so forth, in centuries, is so.
sewing pieces of missing elements for his colleagues with attaching them and replacing where they miss. So it's, it's a perennial conservation. And this to me is acceptable because the same people in, in 500 years, they are doing the same thing all the time. As in Thailand, in Bangkok, they do the same. Or in Munich. This is a recent experience. We experienced together this summer with a colleague of ours, with Frank Heidemann. And uh, this is the, the Arte Pinacothek in Munich. And professor, very important professor, Hans Dörngast, he did the restoration of This is a general view, now it's under restoration. But you can see on the right hand side that you have differences. Differences of the surviving part of the gallery survived the bomb attacks of the Second World War, which was this, which is completely reconstructed. How it is reconstructed? It's reconstructed in a way that is visible. Everything can say, oh, that's new. And that's old. This is what we want to do with why we are restoring monuments. And uh, in other terms, other details of the same gallery, the same pinacotec, the science very heavy work, like here, all over. They are not deleted, they are not cancelled as in Berlin. <coughs> they are there. And this is a fantastic example. A rider with his horse and did all the signs of the war in his body. The bullets all over. And this is the way. We don't we cannot delete our history. We have to show it to ourselves so that we remember and to our new generation.